I'm Diego Sanchez, COO of HW Media, and this is 10 Minute Talks, where I have a quick, informative conversation with leaders at companies that are growing during this difficult housing market. My guest today is Laura Brandau, Chief Growth Officer and Partner at EPM. Laura, welcome to 10 Minute Talks. Well, I'm so happy to be here, Diego. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm so excited to have you on. Before we dive in, could you give a 60 second intro of yourself and EPM? Sure, absolutely. Well, I'm Laura Brandeo, as Diego said. Actually, my title has recently changed to now I'm the Chief Strategy Officer of EPM, yeah, and a partner, and been here for about a year. Um, April of 22 was made when I made the transition over. I am an industry veteran. I have been in the industry for my entire career, have built a couple of companies along the way, and I was brought into EPM as a a partner to grow and kind of take us into many different directions of rolling out new products, bringing in new verticals and expanding our client base, as well as picking up efficiencies and increasing our effectiveness and service levels in regards as from an operational standpoint. You have a long history in the mortgage industry. What excited you about the opportunity at EPM? Growth. You know, honestly, Diego, I have recognized that I'm a builder. I am someone that constantly is looking for that challenge and opportunity to grow within the industry and make a monumental difference along that way, right? So I recognize that, you know, number one, Eddie Perez, my my partner, we just were, were two people that have known each other for a very long time within the industry. And his mission of empowering people more and coming together to make a, a monumental difference within our industry was something that I was also passionate about. So when an opportunity arose for us to partner up to look at making a difference while growing, I knew that we were coming into a challenging time in our industry based on you know, other cycles that I've gone through. And so I know that the best time to make change when it comes to opportunities within our industry is when those challenges occur. When I started my last company that I was at for 15 years, I started at no seven as again, a difficult time in the marketplace. During that time, you have two choices. You freeze in fear and you kind of stay put, or you look for opportunities that are around you and have clarity to be able to see a way to grow through it. Because when you grow through something, you will actually come out on the other side much farther ahead than if you froze in time. I love it. So what exactly is EPM? (laughs) <laughs> so e- EPM is a full service, you know, lender. Uh-huh. So we are licensed in all 50 states and Puerto Rico. You know, it's interesting. I never did loans in Puerto Rico until I came to EPM. Not something I would have even thought about. And then when I dove into that and I realized the opportunity again to dive into, you know, helping families within that territory and being able to offer them financing and programs and and, um, go into that segment. That's something I would have never even, you know, gone into. So with that, EPM right now, we are growing in leaps and bounds on our TPO side. So our broker channel has drastically grown over this last year. We are increasing on our correspondence side. That's another area that, you know, is a small segment right now, but we are, you know, really focusing on that to grow that also, in addition to continuing to grow our amazing retail division. You know, I was looking at your LinkedIn profile before we spoke and your cover image has say yes every day highlighted. What does say yes every day mean to you? All right. So that all started in 2018. So in 2018, up until that point, I had no social media presence because at that time I spent every waking moment practically at my desk working, you know, working for the company. And in 2018, that was margin compression year, we all remember, um, I was looking for additional ways to grow. And I was asked to speak 
at a particular conference. Oh, I said yes to going to the conference. And about two weeks before speaking, I, I got very nervous. And I reached out to the, con the conference promoter and I said, ah, I think I'm going to have somebody else do it for me. And that person said, no, you're going on that stage. You're going to speak and you're going to do an amazing job. Well, I got up on that stage and afterwards I had a line of women waiting to speak to me. And I was like, I thought I did something wrong. And those women, those women said, Laura, thank you for being a woman executive up on a stage because we don't get to see that every day. And that inspired us that maybe we can have that opportunity in the future. Well, I realized that if that person didn't tell me, no, you're, you're going up there, I would have never had that experience and provided that to those women. So in that moment, I decided that I will not say no anymore. I am going to keep my mind open and ready for opportunities that come before me for me to share my voice, share my thoughts, and be able to be an inspiration to others. So that year, I started saying yes to things. And if you look at my LinkedIn, you see I'm the chair of this, and I'm on the board of that, and I'm a writer, and I do all these other things. That all came from that moment in time. And so Say Yes Every Day is my book, my first book I, I published it in 2020 during the pandemic. And now I'm actually working on my third version of Say Yes Every Day, where what I do now is I open it up to people in the industry and I pick a topic. This new topic is confidence and transformation. And I allow them to write a chapter in my book and I actually give them a ghostwriter that will work with them. And I provide that as a gift back to the industry because I feel everyone has a story and everyone needs to get that out. That's amazing. You know, and I've seen you speak at several conferences and you have this very passionate, but also insightful and factual speaking style. How did you develop your speaking style? So going back to that very first time, right? So it, this is actually funny, right? Because this is the world we live in now. Well, after the person told me no, I'm like, okay, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to really research the best way to do it. I went to YouTube. No joke. I went to YouTube and I started watching all these different videos of how to be an amazing moderator. What's your role? Because that particular one I was moderating how to be a great moderator, how to make your panel really shine, how even what to wear. How like, I remember wearing a simple black dress because they were like, don't wear anything bright because the panelists should be wearing something bright, not you as the moderator. I read books. I studied just on my own, just how to do this. And as I did different ones, I am there for the audience. So I pay attention if the audience reacts to certain things that I do, I take that and I apply it in the future to other things that I do on stage. So you put in the work. That's amazing. So you're the you're the chief, you were the chief growth strategy. officer. Now you're the chief strategy officer, but it's all about growth, right? So yes. what is EPM's growth strategy for 2023? Yeah, I mean, right now it is absolutely going deeper and gaining market share in regards to our broker channel, building out the correspondent channel, and continuing to hire amazing and wonderful loan officers that were very focused on the virtual loan officer right now. That's a different model than we originally had. I mean, everyone had branches and everyone, that was how you built out, right? But now, because so many of the laws have changed and the rules and regulations on the licensing side due to COVID, you know, which is a wonderful thing, we're able to go out into the virtual world and really get those amazing partners and loan officers to come in. So we're focused in right now on the experience. It really is all about the experience, the experience for our clients, the experience for our team members, the experience for the customers and families that are on the other side. So our growth strategy is getting better 
every single day, focused in on that experience, building out. We're about to launch our own um, technology platform. That's our client facing platform. We've been working on that for two and a half years. So everything is continuing to get better and improve every single day. And by doing that, that's where the growth comes from, right? Because you can't expect growth if you're not, you said it, putting in the work to make sure that you're getting better every single day. So how are you leaning in when so many other lenders are either status quo or leaning back or going out of business or what, what, what's, what's your, what's your secret sauce? Well, I think it's our collaboration. You know, I, I just actually, I was interviewing somebody right before this because we we are adding team members, right? In different areas of our company. And our biggest thing has to do with that collaboration because it's not one area, right? If you don't have an effective pricing model, right? Well, if that piece is, isn't collaborating with your operational and your sales side, well, then you're broken, right? You're disjointed. You're not connected. So I think the secret sauce is really the collaboration that is done throughout the entire company because it literally takes every single piece. So it's constantly diving in and knowing, you know, like, for example, we were on a call earlier today and that call spurred, okay, this is how this one thing affects secondary, affects sales, affects operations, affects technology, affects post-closing. So I think it's really having the mindset of everyone in our company and organization knows what our mission is and where we're going. We have a clear vision. And by having that clear vision, you can sit around all day and come up with reasons why you're not doing something or why you can't do something. But when there is a clear vision of there's no reason why that cannot happen, because if every single one of us comes together and we're all wor working towards that same vision, there's always going to be outside factors, always going to be outside factors. We stay positive to the fact of those are just excuses of why not. We're going to focus on what's possible. Laura, this has been an incredible 10 minute conversation. I really appreciate you joining me today. Thank you so much, Diego.